Welcome in Braves Today, bravestoday.com. It's all brought to you by none other than plainscoffee.com. Go use promo code BRAVES, get your 10% off whenever you go visit and get those beans delivered right to your door. Fresh ground coffee and whole bean coffee. It's all what you need at plainscoffee.com. Also have tea, by the way. Uh, how are we feeling, Braves fans? Uh, you Overall, you got to be happy with the weekend that Atlanta was able to take the series in Philadelphia. You got to be more than happy. I know that I am not necessarily eating my words because I got exactly what I told Zach on the previous pod, what I wanted out of Chris Sale, and got exactly that out of Sale on the mound today. Five and a third inning pitch. That's that five and dive we talked about. I needed that minimum or a maximum of six innings, and then let the pin take over. Five hits, a couple of earned runs, a couple of walks. The most impressive thing was the Ks. He had seven strikeouts on the day. So Chris Sale definitely is doing more than probably what we expected out of him. Uh, Adam Duvall even said he was talking before the game about Sale because he played with him in Boston. said when he's out there, he means business. He's going to war. Uh, exchanging texts with Zach a little bit earlier in the game, and he even said Chris Sale never looks happy. He's just one of those guys that's always intense and loves to be out there on the mound. So, Chris Sale, congratulations. Tip of the hat to you, sir. You did exactly what was asked of you. The bullpen more than likely, or to me, still did what was asked for him. I know there's a lot of hate for Aaron Bummer out there as far as what he gave up, but that's why I titled this Game of Inches. And the reason being is because an almost double play an almost spectacular play in left field out of Adam Duvall coming in on that ball that ended up plating two runs that he probably should have had or could have had hit his glove. I think it was when his arm kind of got rolled up, it ended up dislodging the ball. So that's why he ended up dropping it. But the biggest thing for me today is we have got to realize that this lineup looks like it's going to go as the bottom of the order goes. Top of the order kind of did what they needed to today, even though Acuna ended up going 0 for today, 0 for 3 with a couple of Ks. Ozzy Albies did what Ozzy Albies has been doing, which is actually hit the ball and put the ball in play, and it just happens to carry a little bit. 2 for 4 on the day with a first inning home run. Also, Austin Riley, after having... Ofer in the in the first game ends up getting a hit yesterday and then gets two hits today. So he seems to be back on track. But then Matt Olson, he had a torrid streak in as far as Philadelphia was concerned and basically owned the Phillies in Philly. However, 0 for 4 today. So that all comes to a screeching halt. Ozuna had a hit today, and so did Duvall. But when you look at the bottom of the order, the hot hitting Michael Harris the second. 0 for 4 on the day. Arcia, 0 for 3 on the day, which I also thought was hilarious because uh, they were talking in the booth about how he's cut down his chase rate and how he's not chasing balls anymore. And then his last at bat, he ended up chasing a couple and ended up getting a K on that. So uh, Trump, 0 for 2 on the day. Kelnick, however, comes in and continues to rake. Bounces one off the wall. Man, I thought I was going to get out of there. Ends up scoring, of course, because of Ozzy and uh, cuts it to within one. So I thought they had an opportunity to do something there. Our Darno never saw the play today. So uh, really nothing on the bottom of the order because Kelnick did his late. So I wouldn't necessarily call that the bottom of the order. He was put in there to, to pinch hit and, and ended up not staying in the game. But Chris Sale, Five and a third, five hits, two earned runs, a couple of walks, and seven Ks. Jimenez gives up a run as well in two-thirds of an inning. And then, of course, you got Bummer, who everybody's been piling on him. He did give up four straight hits. However, a couple of those eh, kind of iffy. So, A.J. Minter comes in and does his job at the end. And then for the Phillies, it, they did exactly what they've been doing against the Braves whenever Suarez takes the mound. He went five in. He did his five and dive as well. He did give up three hits and three earned runs. However, the top of the lineup, he had complete control over. We just talked about all the offers up at the top, except for all, all these. So Suarez did what he was supposed to do. And I really thought, I thought, let's get Suarez out of there. Let's get into that bullpen again. And then the Braves should take advantage of that. Really didn't. The only one they did is Dominguez. He gave up three hits, but everybody else, a hit here by Strom or a hit given up by Strom, and everybody else did their job, including Soto and Alvarado at the end of the ball game. So uh, the Phillies end up taking one of two from the Braves, however, or one of three from the Braves. But I think the Braves are in 
good shape as they head to Chicago, which speaking of which, that is going to be what's up next for the Braves. Another afternoon game. Apparently the Braves can't play at night right now to begin the season, but uh, it's going to be 210 Eastern, 110 Central time uh, against Chris Flexen in Chicago. Now it was already stated that it's supposed to be rainy and windy in Chicago. So they don't even know. And that's over the next three days. So they're not real sure that they will even get the games, all the games in for the next couple of days. So we shall see. Uh, Kelnick, I mentioned him just a moment ago. Pinch hit double with one out in the eighth inning. Always, of course, that two out single scoring him to cut the Phillies lead to 5 4. Riley then following with a single to left. Always racing the third on the play, which I really thought was a mistake at the beginning, but he was in there easily. But the Braves end up losing 5 4 and fell seven out shy of sweeping the season opening series. That would have been the first time since 2015 that the Braves have opened up the year with a sweep. However, they're two and one, and the Phillies are one and two, and the Phillies are still going to be. I guess chirping at us as far as the comments are concerned. So uh, Orlando Arcia, I really wish he'd had a better day at the plate, but defensively he still seems to be the guy that he was last year. He was mentioned in the broadcast quite a bit because we didn't mention this on the last pod. You've seen the, you know, the motion that they do is this, that's a togetherness. And of course, what that's what that means, according to Eddie Perez. Well, it's not about one guy getting the credit for the idea, just like it's not about one guy getting the glory when we all win, when Arceo was asked about it a little bit earlier prior to the game. So I kind of like the new, you know, celebration. They've had, they've had the slash whenever they were out there. They've had the, you know, too short while they're out there. So I kind of like it. We shall see if it continues out throughout the season. They do seem to mean business. Kelnick in his post-game interview, he's right there with Chris Sale as far as just being, I guess, focused and determined and not wanting to put up with any, let's just call it BS. So even after the win yesterday, he seemed to be pretty intense as far as that was concerned. It's all brought to you by Plains Coffee. Go to plainscoffee.com and get those fresh roasted beans sent right to your door. They don't even start to roast it until you make your order. They've got all kinds of coffees, chocolate hazelnut, pecan pie, the turtle, the mocha, and yes, they have teas as well. Keep that in mind when you go order. But the biggest thing is when you go to order, be sure to put in the promo code BRAVES to get your 10% off before you ship them to your door. Up next, the White Sox. We shall see what the Braves are able to do as far as continuing the winning <laughs> because we made the joke that Chavez actually had his first win of the season prior to the White Sox getting their win of the season. Thanks, you guys, for jumping in the comments and mentioning that as well. Let us know what you think. Right now, I think the Braves are in good shape. I still will double down and say that I think that the bottom part of the order, if it stays hot, the Braves will stay hot. When the top of the order, who didn't do great the last couple of days, but they still, when they get that help from the bottom portion, and Duvall, even though he didn't have a hit today, I mean, he's been doing okay. I really look forward to seeing Kelnick a little bit more in the lineup just because he seems to be swinging a hot bat right now, which is kind of odd because that was what he was basically being pointed at the fingers over in Seattle that he wasn't doing. Uh, but now the focus is not on him. And being down there at the bottom, he seems to be excited because with the bleeder that he got yesterday, and then the other non-hard hit ball that he got yesterday. And then all of a sudden, it's been getting bigger and bigger and better as far as exit velo. To, and, and even today, I mean, that ball, another six inches up, and it's, it's out of the ballpark. So uh, we shall see how he does moving forward as they take on the Chicago White Sox, where he'll be used to seeing them since he was in the American League last year. It'll be the Braves and White Sox. We'll give you a post-game pod after that. We may do a pre-game pod whenever I get Lindsey back on here. We shall see. So... Other than that, I'm Ben Taylor. Thanks for watching Braves Today. You can go to bravestoday.com for more information. Uh, Lindsey has got a recap as far as takeaways, as far as today is concerned. He's got that article up as well as some special feature articles that you can check out as well. Again, that is at bravestoday.com.